There is a great deal of discussion about auras and beings of light in the New Age belief system. We must remember, however, there is nothing new under the sun. Long before the development of New Age theology, the Bible taught about bodies of light. Perhaps the most exciting revelation concerning this is that true followers of Yeshua are promised to one day inherit their own glorified bodies of light. This video explores many of these scriptures and other ancient sources, as well as how modern science is proving this concept to be true in many surprising ways. In an effort to give credit where it's due, it must be noted that this video is based on an excellent article written by Douglas Hamp entitled Bodies of Light and Atoms Biophotons. This and many other fascinating resources can be found at douglashamp.com. To begin our investigation into bodies of light, we must first start with the creator of light. There are many important scriptures that give us insight into the nature of the Most High's appearance. An often quoted example of this is the Aaronic blessing found in Numbers 6, 24 through 26. Yahuwah bless you and keep you. Yahuwah make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. It is fascinating to note the Hebrew word translated as shine in this verse is the same word used in Genesis 1.15 to describe the purpose of the lights placed in the firmament, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth, and it was so. Psalm 104 gives a very compelling account of the Father's radiant light. O oh, Yahuwah my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty. Who cover yourself with light as with a garment. 1 John 1 5 gives a unique description of the Father. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. The often quoted 21st chapter of Revelation supports these scriptures. And the city had no need of the sun neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it and the Lamb is the light thereof. Interestingly enough, the Greek word used for light in this verse is the same word translated as candle in Matthew 5.15. Neither do men light a candle to put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. This paints a beautifully symbolic picture that Yeshua, the Lamb of God, is the candle giving light unto the dwelling place of our Heavenly Father. The Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke all record the historical account of Yeshua's transfiguration. These passages reveal some truly interesting details regarding human bodies actually emitting light. Beginning in Mark 2, there are intriguing details regarding Yeshua's clothing during the transfiguration. And his garments became radiant and exceedingly white, as no launderer on earth can whiten them. Here the word white is the Greek term leukos. Its definitions include light, bright, or brilliant, as in brilliant from whiteness or dazzling white. This word, however, can also be referencing the brilliance of the garments of angels and of those exalted to the splendor of the heavenly state. The same word is used in Luke 9.29, and while he was praying, the appearance of his face became different, and his clothing became white and gleaming. The definitions of the original Greek word provides a much fuller understanding and gives better context to exactly what was witnessed that day on the mountain. In Matthew 17.2, we find another important word that reveals the nature of the light that illuminated from the Messiah. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. The word for white is the same leukos seen previously in the verses of Mark and Luke. 
However, Matthew also includes the Greek word phos, which is translated as light. This is the term from which we derive the modern words photo and photon. It is Strong's G5457 and it is defined as light, either as that emitted by a lamp or more interestingly as a heavenly light, such as surrounds angels when they appear on the earth. So clearly, Matthew, Mark, and Luke were describing a literal event in which the fibers of Yeshua's clothing were illuminated and actually glowing with the brightness of the physical light of his glory. In other words, his body was emitting an extremely bright, visible light that was heavenly in nature. This dramatic imagery brings to mind Yeshua's words in John 8, 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. In both instances, the word light in this verse is again the Greek word phos, which was used to describe the light surrounding Yeshua during the transfiguration. While John 8.12 is often interpreted as metaphoric, perhaps there could be literal context to it as well. Is it possible that Yeshua is promising that those who follow him will one day possess similar bodies of light? There are a great many scriptures that describe angels as illuminated beings. Exploring the context behind several of these verses can provide important insight into what the Bible teaches regarding bodies of light. A very familiar passage that details an encounter with an angel is found in Luke 2. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. The word for shone in this verse is perilampo, which quite simply means to shine or illuminate all around. The fact that the shepherds reacted with such great fear suggests that this must have been a very intense and overwhelming experience to encounter with such a radiant being. Luke 24 has another passage that describes being in the presence of an angel. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. The Greek word in this verse that gets translated as shining is astropto. Its definitions include to lighten or pertaining to dazzling objects. Interestingly enough, this word is used only one other time in all of Scripture, and it is also in Luke. Luke 17, 24, For just like the lightning when it flashes out of one part of the sky, shines to the other part of the sky, so will the Son of Man be in his day. The fact that Luke uses the same word to describe both a flash of lightning and the radiance of an angel's garments is a powerful testimony to the brightness and intensity of the angelic being's radiance. The opening verses of Matthew 28 provide beautiful confirmation of Luke's passages. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow, and for fear of him the guards trembled and became like dead men. Here we see that Matthew also makes the comparison between the angel's appearance and lightning, and the terrified reaction of the guards also affirms Luke 2 in which the shepherds were filled with great fear. Equally interesting though is the fact that the word used for white is once again leukos. This is the same word we saw used earlier in Mark and Luke to describe Yeshua's clothing during the Transfiguration. Daniel 10 provides a truly iconic description of an angel's appearance. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of euphaz. His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words was like the voice of a multitude. This verse contains a number of descriptions that suggest light or a shining substance. This also marks the third comparison of lightning to the radiance of angels. Revelation 15 describes the appearance of multiple angels in their luminous garments. 
And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. The Greek word translated as white in this verse is lampros, and its meanings include shining or brilliant. The online Liddell Scott Jones Greek to English lexicon adds more description to this word lampros and defines it as bright, radiant, of the sun and stars. Either way, the idea of clothing being bright and shining due to the body emitting light coincides very well with the descriptions of Yeshua's clothing during his transfiguration. In studying to gain insight into any biblical topic or concept, it can often be informative to gain an understanding of what early scholars believed and taught. It is very fascinating to discover what the ancient understanding was regarding the appearance of Adam and Eve's original form before their fall into sin. The Midrash Rabbah, which is essentially a 1st or 2nd century rabbinic commentary on the Tanakh, shares the following insight into Genesis 3.21, where Yahuwah makes garments of skin for Adam and Eve. The understanding is that before they received garments made from animal hides, they possessed garments of light. This refers to Adam's garments, which were like a torch, or in other words, shedding radiance. The Zohar is the foundational work in the literature of Jewish mystical thought known as Kabbalah. The Zohar is a collection of commentaries on the mystical aspects of Torah, which are the first five books of the Bible. It is conclusively not inspired scripture, however, it can shed light on early rabbinic interpretations of the Torah. Regarding the eyes of Adam and Eve being opened as recorded in Genesis 3-7, the Zohar comments, They had lost the celestial luster which had formerly enveloped them, and of which they were now divested. It also mentions the coats of skin the father had provided were particularly noteworthy, because at first they had had coats of light which procured them the service of the highest of the high, for the celestial angels used to come to enjoy that light. So it is written in Psalms 8, 5, which reads, For thou hast made him but little lower than the angels, and crownest him with glory and honor. The Zohar goes on to comment that Adam in the Garden of Eden was attired in supernatural raiment of celestial radiancy. Again, while discussing the garments of skin with which the Father clothed them, it notes that formerly they were garments of light, to wit, of the celestial light in which Adam ministered in the Garden of Eden. For inasmuch as it is the resplendency of the celestial light that ministers in the Garden of Eden, when first man entered into the Garden, the Holy One, blessed be he, clothed him first in the raiment of that light. The first book of Adam and Eve, also known as the Conflict of Adam and Eve with Satan, is an ancient apocryphal text that is considered Old Testament pseudepigraphia which is a collection of historical biblical works that are not inspired scripture. This text, however, still carries significance in that it provides insight into what was considered acceptable religious writing and ideas of the time. Chapter 50, verse 2, as well as 5 and 6, read as follows. But as they, Adam and Eve, were going in the way, and before they reached that place, Satan, the wicked one, had heard the word of God communing with Adam respecting his covering. Then came the word of God to Adam and Eve, and said to them, This is he who was hidden in the serpent, and who deceived you, and stripped you of the garment of light and glory in which you were. Many ancient Christian writings also contain interpretations that confirm an understanding regarding bodies of light. The early church scholar Arnobius included notes in his work against the heathens that read, But let us not reason from things terrestrial as regards things celestial. Our coarse material fabrics are shadows of the true. The robes of light are realities and are conformed to spiritual bodies, as even here a mist may envelop a tree. Methodius, the 9th century Byzantine Christian theologian, made the following commentary regarding Isaiah 61-4. 
It is the church whose children shall come to her with all speed after the resurrection, running to her from all quarters. She rejoices, receiving the light which never goes down, and clothed with the brightness of the word as with a robe. For what other more precious or honorable ornament was it becoming that the queen should be adorned, to be led as a bride to the Lord, when she had received a garment of light, and therefore was called by the Father? Come then, let us go forward in our discourse, and look upon this marvelous woman as upon virgins prepared for a marriage, pure and undefiled, perfect and radiating a permanent beauty, wanting nothing of the brightness of light, for instead of a dress clothed with light itself, and instead of precious stones, her head adorned with shining stars, for instead of the clothing which we have, she had light. The Apocalypse of Peter, or Revelation of Peter, is an early Christian text of the second century and an example of apocalyptic literature. It affords us a wonderful commentary as to what undoubtedly many Christians believed had happened and would come to pass. Again, we do not look at such texts as inspired of God, but as early Christian commentary on the scriptures. The second chapter contains the following account in which the disciples were traveling with Yeshua up to a mountain to pray. And going with him, we the twelve apostles besought him that he would show us one of our righteous brethren that had departed out of the world, that we might see what manner of men they are in their form, and take courage, and encourage also the men that should hear us. It goes on to explain that as they were praying, two men appeared standing before the Lord, upon whom we were not able to look. For there issued from their countenance a ray as of the sun, and their raiment was shining so as the eye of man never saw the light. For no mouth is able to declare, nor heart to conceive the glory wherewith they were clad, and the beauty of their countenance, whom when we saw we were astonished, for their bodies were whiter than any snow, and redder than any rose, and the redness of them was mingled with the whiteness, and, in a word, I am not able to declare their beauty. These are your righteous brethren, whose appearance ye did desire to see. The dwellers in that place were clad with the raiment of shining angels, and their raiment was like unto their land. Obviously, the ancient Hebrew and early church scholars shared the belief that Adam and Eve initially possessed bodies that actually radiated light. As covered in the beginning of this video, there are a number of verses that describe the radiant light emanating from our Heavenly Father. This understanding gives new context to the verses in Genesis that record the creation of man. Genesis 1.27, So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Genesis 5.1, This is the book of the generations of Adam. In that day God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. The ancient scholars also agreed that the resurrected bodies of believers would literally emit light and shine like the sun. The scriptures reveal much about the luminous nature of Yahuwah our Father, Yeshua Messiah, and the host of heavenly angels, but the Bible also contains some fascinating and tantalizing verses regarding the future glorified bodies of resurrected believers. Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. This is the same word used in Revelation 15 to describe the clothing of the angels in heaven. So, like the angels, it seems our heavenly or celestial bodies will also be literally clothed in garments of light. Philippians 3 teaches our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. The Bible even compares righteous believers to the radiance of the sun. Judges 5.31 reads, Thus let all your enemies perish, O Yahuwah, but let those who love him be like the rising of the sun in its might. Proverbs 4.18 says, The path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until full day. 
Matthew 13, 43 declares, Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Daniel 12, 3 proclaims, Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Scripture lays out a pattern of image bearers that all seem to share the characteristic of physical radiance, the first of which is Adam, as described in Genesis 1.27. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Then there is Yeshua, who is, as Paul explains in Colossians 1, the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. And then you have the future saints who have put on the new self and will one day be completely renewed in their glorified bodies. Colossians 3 addresses this, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. These three verses all carry essentially the same word for image. The verse in Genesis uses the Hebrew Salem, which gets translated into icon in the Greek Septuagint, a word that carries several meanings for likeness, including the image of the Son of God into which true Christians are transformed, is likeness not only to the heavenly body, but also to the most holy and blessed state of mind which Christ possesses. Obviously, the fall of man as a result of disobedience has caused us to lose most of the resplendent nature with which God originally created humans. However, there are a number of exciting verses that also seem to suggest that for obedient sons and daughters, that image will one day be regained. 1 John 3 2 teaches, Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. In Psalm 17, 15, David writes, As for me, I will seek your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. Or Colossians 3, 4, which teaches, When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Peter also writes concerning this, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is the world through lust. Douglas Hamp summarizes this in his article by stating, We must not forget, however, that Adam was originally created in the image of God. Thus, if our new man will be like God, then we must conclude that when God made Adam in his image and likeness, Adam emitted light in a way similar to God. Since we will all have bodies of light once our image is fully restored, so too Adam must have had that covering of light before his fall into corruption. There appears to be no difference between Adam in his pre-fall state and we in our heavenly state as far as our bodies are concerned. If Adam and Eve's bodies did in fact originally radiate light, and if our future glorified bodies will also be literally radiant and shining, what kind of scientific evidence might we expect to find in support of these biblical claims? A photon is a particle representing a quantum of light or other electromagnetic radiation. Put another way, a photon is a fundamental particle of visible light. A biophoton is a photon of non-thermal origin in the visible and ultraviolet spectrum emitted from a biological system. Biophoton emission is the spontaneous emission of ultra-weak light emanating from all living systems, including man. The detection and characterization of human biophoton emission has led to suggestions that it has potential future applications in medicine. Although widely undiscussed by the mainstream media, it is a documented scientific fact that DNA emits light. This fact has been independently tested and confirmed by a number of different scientists from a variety of countries. 
Between 1923 and 1955, scientists from Ukraine, Russia, and Italy had all discovered and independently confirmed ultra-weak light emissions in various forms of plant life. In the 1970s, German biophysicist Dr. Fritz Albert Popp began investigating this phenomenon in earnest. Dr. Popp became the inventor of biophoton theory and coined the term biophotons, which refers to coherent photons emitted from biological organisms. Biophoton theory concerns DNA as the most probable source of biophoton emission. Perhaps one of the more fascinating and tangible confirmations of the relationship between light and life are the increasingly numerous medical applications of light. Johan Boswinkel is a Dutch biophysicist, lecturer, therapist, and is the managing director and founder of the Institute for Applied Biophoton Sciences. He is also the co-engineer of the Shiren, which is the latest and most sophisticated instrument developed for assessment and treatment with biophotons. It uses fiber optic technology to conduct biophotons to and from the body. The biofeedback system of the Shiren assesses the quality of the biophotonic light being emitted by the body using the electroacupuncture points in the hands and feet. Treatment is then administered by introducing various signals of pulsing laser light to oppose the chaotic or disruptive light detected in the body. Boswinkel has reported a near 90% success rate at treating individuals with a variety of chronic illnesses. Phototherapy is the use of light in the treatment of skin diseases. It has been noted in ancient times that psoriasis often improves with exposure to the sun. Sunlight consists mainly of visible light, ultraviolet A and ultraviolet B light. Phototherapy reproduces the action of sunlight in a scientific and controlled manner. Phototherapy has been found to be effective in a range of skin conditions. It is used most widely in psoriasis, vitiligo, and atopic dermatitis. Phototherapy is also the most common treatment for reducing high bilirubin levels that cause jaundice in a newborn. In the standard form of phototherapy, a baby lies in a bassinet or enclosed plastic incubator and is exposed to a type of fluorescent light that is absorbed by the baby's skin. This treatment may also include a fiber optic blanket underneath the infant. Light therapy is a way to treat seasonal affective disorder and certain other conditions by exposure to artificial light. Seasonal affective disorder is a type of depression that occurs at certain time each year, usually in the fall or winter. During light therapy, individuals sit or work near a device called a light therapy box. The box gives off bright light that mimics natural outdoor light. Light therapy is thought to affect brain chemicals linked to mood and sleep, easing seasonal affective disorder symptoms. Using a light therapy box may also help with other types of depression, sleep disorders, and other conditions. In fact, light therapy is now even available for home use with the Neutrogena Acne Mask. Their website states that with clinically proven light therapy used by dermatologists for over a decade, the mask harnesses the power of light to treat mild to moderate acne. The mask even utilizes different spectrums of light for specific treatment purposes. Red light has been shown to reduce inflammation and blue light that kills acne causing bacteria. In speaking about the scientific significance of biophoton research, Dr. Albert Popp has said, We know today that man is essentially a being of light, and the modern science of photobiology is presently proving this. In terms of healing, the implications are immense. We know now, for example, that quanta of light can initiate or arrest cascade-like reactions in the cells, and that genetic cellular damage can be virtually repaired within hours by faint beams of light. We are still on the threshold of fully understanding the complex relationship between light and life, but we can now say emphatically that the function of our entire metabolism is dependent on light. Dr. Fritz Albert Popp has conducted research that confirms the existence of biophotons. These particles of light with no mass transmit information within and between cells. His work shows that DNA in a living cell stores and releases photons creating biophotonic emissions that may hold the key to illness and health. 
Pop has written eight books and more than 150 scientific journals, articles, and studies that address basic questions of theoretical physics, biology, complementary medicine, and biophotons. In addition, researchers from the School of Medicine at Kanazawa University in Kanazawa, Japan, confirm the universality of DNA emitting light. They add that light is not only emitted, but also absorbed by all living things. So science has confirmed that the DNA of all living things is capable of absorbing and emitting light, and currently the primary light source to which all life is being exposed is the sun. However, since we know that God is light, then what would happen if a person were to actually be in the presence of God? For example, if they were to speak with him face to face as one speaks with a friend. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, as he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. Aaron and all the people of Israel saw Moses, and behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. Could this be historical evidence of biophotons absorbing and then emitting some of the tremendous energy and light radiating from the presence of the Almighty? This would certainly seem plausible when considering the reliable testimony of scripture regarding bodies of light combined with the scientific evidence of biophotons. Could this then be a confirming witness to the original nature of Adam and Eve, as well as the future existence for believers who receive glorified bodies? To better answer this, let's review the points we've covered thus far. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. The Bible teaches in multiple passages that there is a massive amount of light and energy radiating from the presence of the Most High. Yeshua's body emitted light at the Transfiguration as a demonstration of his relationship with the Father and as an example of what is to come for resurrected obedient believers. Angels have radiant bodies of shining light. There are numerous passages which describe their luminous appearance. Angels are frequently mistaken for God. Many times when people encounter angels in the Bible, their initial response is to bow down and worship. We will be like the angels in the world to come. It is important to note that the Bible does not teach that people become angels when they die, but rather the status and to some extent the appearance of resurrected believers is equal to that of angels. Ancient Christian and Jewish scholars shared the belief that Adam and Eve initially possessed bodies of light. This is very clear as evidenced in many of their writings and teachings. Early Christian scholars also believed that the resurrected bodies of believers would literally emit light and shine like the sun. And finally, we've seen now how many scientists from different countries have all confirmed that DNA absorbs and emits light. In this dark and sinful world, it is all too easy for believers to become overwhelmed, discouraged, and distracted. We are constantly bombarded with attacks from the adversary that are designed to cast doubt, create confusion, and discredit the authority of the scriptures. Because of his intense jealousy, the enemy seeks to take the things of God and twist them into perversions that call into question the definitive truth of the Father's word. However, this promise of a future body of light for those who remain obedient until the very end should be an extremely encouraging promise. For those who overcome, we will return to the radiant nature that he originally intended for us. And this should provide great motivation to endure and remain steadfast in our pursuing and loving the Father with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and doing our very best to daily follow the examples set forth by his Son Yeshua the Messiah. May we all continue to strive to let our light shine.